Hello and welcome to this quick overview and review of this model here. This is the Turbo B77R. This is the version without the HD recording bits and pieces in, which in my humble opinion is a good thing because I've looked at a couple of Cine Bs and the life of the battery, the flight time that you get from those is really, really short. So this is a 77 millimeter wheelbase. The bottom carbon fiber is one and a half millimeters and it is a carbon fiber frame at the bottom, which is really nice. So rather than some of the other models I've seen in this class where the actual hoops that protect the props are a structural part, they're not in this. And I do like that. It gives a lot more rigidity. Top board thickness is about one millimeter. It's a 20 by 20 millimeter flight controller in the middle in here. The motors are 1103 iFlight motors with a one and a half millimeter shaft. It's got a Cadix Turbo EOS2 camera at the front. The props are Gemfan 1635 40 millimeter three bladed pieces. And the prop guards of the iFlight prop guards, which are 40 millimeters, which gives a nice little bit of clearance around them. So if you bump into stuff, there's a chance that it won't catch the prop. Flight controller inside this is a Sussex Micro F4 flight tower system. It has the F4 base flight controller, will support 2 to 4S, although I'm running this one on 3S and I think that's probably the best bet. 12 amp brushless ESCs in the middle, continuous current of 12 amp, and they will run at D shot and we'll show you the Beats Flight setup in a minute. The VTX power system will run either in pit mode, 25, 100 or 200 milliwatts, IPEX connector, and the VTX is all set up to be controlled via the Betaflight on-screen display, just as you'd expect in something like this. There are different receiver options. This one's come from Banggood. I'll pop a link down below so you can get it with no receiver, with a Bind and Fly FR Sky Mini XM Plus, which is what's in this one here, FlySky, Futaba, or DSM, DSM-X versions as well. So let me just quickly plug it into Beatflight. Let's have a look how it's all set up. So there we go, it's all working. That's always nice to see. Uh, let's enable expert mode so we can look around. Ports look like that. So it's the IRC Tramp protocol on UART1. UART2 is being used for serial. DSHOT 600. Motor stop isn't turned on, which I, is probably handy for this because it's powerful enough to do some basic aerobatics. Everything else looks pretty standard, nothing particularly exciting. Air mode is permanently enabled, so is anti-gravity, dynamic filter as well. Beeper configuration is set up good. Battery and power is all set up. Failsafe is set to drop, perfect. PID tuning looks like that. And actually it is a very nice model to fly. Uh, receiver stuff needed a bit of tweaking for my radio setup. And the receiver wasn't powered until you plugged the battery in. Uh, I'm not a fan of that personally, but with the battery plugged in and everything bound, you're all okay. I did have to take off the top plate to get to the bind button, so be prepared to do that. The bind button on the XM Plus that was installed in this uh, was a bit tricky to get to, and the XM Plus looks like it's running on the international version. So if you're an EU pilot, then you're probably going to have to just pop it out and flash it. Modes looked like this by default, a uh, pretty reasonable setup. Um, so I did very little on this to get it set. Um, all I did was just tweak it around and just change the channel assignments to be what mine is. But I like this uh, low position being angle, middle position being horizon, top position being kind of rate mode. Turtle mode is enabled here as well, uh, so actually really good. The only thing I would potentially do is turn on the beeper so that when the turtle mode is enabled, the beeper is turned on as well, just because this is such a small model. If it lands in long grass or gets stuck in a hedge or something, you're really going to struggle to find it. On-screen display by default looks like that. I did a little bit of messing around, so it suited how I tend to fly. And let's just jump into the CLI, see what version is running. You probably spotted it in the bottom right-hand corner already. Uh, the beta flight version on this is 3.5.7. So it isn't the latest version by quite a stretch, but it still flies nicely with the tune of the setup that they've got on here out the box. Target is MK41. So now we've got all that done, let me talk a little bit about how it flies. Now I've been flying this both inside, um, I use a little throttle curve on the radio just to calm it down a lot. Um, it has a lot of power on 3S. I'm actually using a little Happy Model 300 milliamp power 
3060 C battery on here and you are going to need a pretty high C battery with this battery that I'm using I'm getting about two and a half minutes flight time if I'm aggressive on the throttle or I'm flying outdoors so in summary what do I think well I do like the way that this thing is made this is probably the nicest one of this class of models that I personally have had here iFlight have done a really good job in putting this together and the way that the carbon fiber is built and finished the, the component choice the way it's all laid out is really nice I like the fact that there are the spares for the props in the box and those receiver choices when you order one do mean that you can bind it pretty much straight away to your radio but again be careful because it did appear that the XM on mine the XM plus that I ordered did come with international firmware I do wish that more vendors would give an option to have international or EU firmware flashed when you're picking an FR Sky based receiver this is well under the 250 gram limit, even with the battery. So you could fly this if you're in a location where that 250 gram makes a difference. And on the 3S battery that I'm using, again, this is a 300 milliamp hour 3060 C battery here. I'm getting about uh, two and a half minutes, but it's hovering about 30% throttle. So it has an awful lot more punch. So if you're gonna fly it indoors, I would just use a throttle curve to calm it down. But if you want to be a bit of a hooligan, then you can fly it nice and quickly and it has enough power to do a few flips and rolls and acrobatics too. A couple of things to be aware of with this. Uh, first of all is that it isn't supplied with any batteries. I'm always sad when it is. Battery choice for these smaller models is so important. They don't have a lot of carrying capacity and whether or not using 2S or 3S or how it's all set up and how long the flight time is going to be is a little bit of a challenge unless they are crystal clear about the batteries you should be using. So I would have welcomed a little bit more advice here from iFlight on the battery to use. And I tried it with a couple and this battery gave me the best experience. There isn't any manual with this. It's not particularly tricky to set up, but you do need to know what you're doing. So first time pilot who's going to bind it to their radio. If you've never flown anything before, then you're going to need a pal or sit down and watch lots and lots of videos before you try and attempt to set this up. To plug it into the computer, there is the little USB adapter. Now, the USB port is actually hidden behind two of the prop guards, so you can't get the cable in. The little USB adapter plugs into the side and you plug into that. You do have to wiggle the prop protectors around a little bit to get it in, uh, but once it's in there, you're fine. And to be honest, once you've got the initial setup and you've done your receiver settings, you're probably not going to want to change anything else on here. And if you do, you've always got the option of the Betaflight on-screen display. I do like these little USB extension pieces. If iFlight sold them as separate things, I would get them because these are great for things like the Ardu Pilot fixed wing builds where I'm using boards more designed for quadcopters in things like flying wings because they invariably always hide away the USB port and it's tricky to get to once you've hidden it inside. And the other thing, of course, is there are no prop guard spares in the box. Uh, the prop guards seem pretty resilient. I've flown this now for uh, about two weeks and it's bounced off everything. It's been a great model to fly. The only downside with this is the downside of all of the models in this class in that the flight time is limited by the battery that it can actually carry. And the best one that I found for the way that I fly here only gave me two and a half minutes flight time. I would like a model like this to be able to fly for five, six, seven minutes ideally inside. So the weight of the model is beautifully built, but the weight along with the battery choices do limit you. And that, I guess, is my problem with all of these class of models, is that short flight time. But this, for me, is the nicest one that I've had in here. The way it's built and the way it's put together and the spares availability I mean that if I'm going to choose a model that's only going to fly for two and a half minutes at a time, I would probably choose this one. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too.
If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.